On this Debaco University video, we're going over particle size and texture analysis that you may get with your soil test report. The image here shows a nice little relative comparison of the larger sand particle, the mid-sized silt particle, and the small little particle here of clay. And this video is going to go over particle size and also texture analysis importance in regards to a soil test report. So first off, soil texture. When we're looking at the texture of soil, well, soil texture is, is a classification instrument used both in field and laboratories to determine soil classes based on their physical structure. A soil texture analysis determines the relative proportions of sand, silt, and clay in a sample. The textural class is based on the USDA's textural triangle classification where there are 12 different textural classes. I'll uh, show a graph of that. Soil texture can be determined using uh, qualitative methods such as texture by feel and also quantitative methods which includes the use of a hydrometer method. Knowing a soil's texture can help gauge the required inputs and potential productivity of a soil for crops. And this shows the, how the sand, silt, and clay particles in suspension allowing the settle out I'm using a hydrometer here to kind of get an idea of exactly where levels that's reading and it will be taken usually uh, very early on and then they'll let it sit for about two hours and they'll take another reading uh, and then they'll compare those two readings. If you want to see this in action, I have a path of soil through a soil test lab where they'll show you this exact process. Now the soil triangle, the triangle is used to determine the uh, classification of soil based on the percentage of clay, silt, and sand. Notice how the percentage of clay has a large impact on the soil's classification. And we can see that here. Clay, 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 all these would be considered a form of clay, and that's the vast majority of this triangle. This is simply due to the small particle size resulting in a high surface area to volume ratio. And how you try to work this is you look at the percentage of clay, on this side of the triangle with the percentage silt and the percentage of sand. So for example, if I had 60% clay and I come down here and then I'm looking at, um, we could say 30% silt and then for uh, sand, we'd have only 10% sand here. So where those would converge would be right here and that'd be considered a clay soil. We could see again, we have other options here. If we only had 10% clay and then we had 20% um, sand, we would then have to have 70% uh, percent silt and that would classify us as a silt loam. So it's kind of the way you read these three sides of this soil triangle to get the proper classification. Now, sand, silt, and clay particles alone is often classification given to soil that is not predominantly sand, silt, or clay. And that just has some a little different characteristics to that. We could see clay, we typically think of it having a very sticky appearance, uh, kind of that ability to kind of plate on itself um, there. And sand is kind of composed of, relatively speaking, large particles that tend to fall apart uh, from each other and be independent. Now, true sandy soil um, has the largest particle sizes here. Uh, and again, that sand it may not just be this, a single type of stone, it could be a combination. Sandy soils, though, are known to have good aeration and drainage, but a limited ability to hold water and also nutrients. The composition of sand varies depending on the local rock sources and conditions, but the most common constitutes of sand in inland continental settings is uh, and non-tropical coast settings is silica, which is silicon dioxide or SiO2. It's usually in the form of quartz. Now, silt is a mid-sized particle and offers properties in between sand and clay. Silt has a moderate uh, surface area with typically a non-sticky plastic feel. Silt usually has a flowery feel when it's dry and kind of a slippery feel when it's wet. Silt can be visually observed by hand lens exhibiting a sparkling appearance. It's kind of that in-between kind of um, soil there and typically a more sought after soil for growing crops. Loam soil. Uh, loam by weight is a mineral composition, which is about 40, 40, 20, concentration sand, silt, and clay, respectively. These proportions get, can vary to a degree, however, and result in different types of loamy soils. For example, there's sandy loam, silty loam, clay loam, 
sandy clay loam and silty clay loam and loam. If you notice in that kind of readout there, it's important of the order that they're presented as well to, classify, to most precisely classify the soil. Note that the primary differential of loam in most dictionaries is soil with humus or organic uh, content and no mention of particle size texture. And this is definition used by many gardeners. In the U.S. Department of Agriculture textual classification triangle, the only soil that is not predominantly sand, silt, and clay is called loam. Loam soils generally contain more nutrients, moisture, and humus than sandy soils and have better drainage and infiltration of water and air than silt and clay-rich soils and are easier to till than clay soils. They're simply called to be growers refer to them as being less heavy, um, less likely to kind of clump together. Um, allow water to drain a little bit better, definitely compared to a clay, and also allow better aeration of the root zone of a plant. Then we get to our clay soils. And our clay soils are the smallest particle size and have the greatest impact on soil properties. The high surface area allow them to hold nutrients well, which reduces the chance of leaching. Sounds like a good thing. However, this soil can hold water, which can result in plants being more likely to be waterlogged. Also, when uh, clay soils dries, it will crack and be more difficult than other types to rehydrate. So it's a negative. You can tell me if true clay soils have the picture here. If you start at one end of the field and you walk your way to the other end of the field and you're six inches taller by the time you get to the end, that's because all the clay builds up. That would be a true clay soil because it has a tendency definitely to stick together. Now, how do we determine these different um, textures by feel? Well, there is this ribbon test. And I'll go through the exact kind of process here that if you want to go through and read it, you can. But you're basically placing soil in the palm of your hand, adding some water, kneading that soil to a smooth plastic consistency to like a putty. And then you want to see if does the soil remain a ball when you kind of squeeze it. If it does, you go on to these next steps. If it doesn't, it might be too dry. You might have to re-wet it. Or you might be simply dealing with a very sandy soil where it can't really hold itself together. You make a ball and you open it up and it falls apart. Uh, it could be dealing with a sandy soil if the moisture is correct. If it does form uh, a ball, then you want to go to the next step where you want to look at does it kind of form a ribbon. Can you moisten the soil and kind of get it to form a, a ribbon? And based on the length of the ribbon that you can get will determine the higher percentage of clay. So the longer the ribbon, the more clay percentage you have in that soil. Then you can go to the next step. Does it feel gritty? Does it feel smooth? And that can help you just do a quick test in the field uh, as far as determining what type of soil you might be dealing with. Again, this takes some practice, uh, but you can kind of go through here with some soil you may have locally and what you may know the type of and see if you can follow this process there to determine the texture by feel. Now, soil texture favorable for growing uh, a loam or a silty loam. By weight, again, it's about 40% sand, 40% silt, 20% clay. Variance in these proportions result in different types of loam. And as I said, listed them out here. Sandy loam, silty loam, clay loam, sandy clay loam, silty clay loam, and just plain loam. So again, these are different um, soil textures, but all these in general would be considered, at least initially, favorable for growing plants. Now lastly, soil texture for the um, long term. Uh, assuming no major modifications to the soil, the texture class should remain fairly consistent, so it's not necessary to need to check each soil test the grower takes. While you should be kind of going through and testing it for pH and nutrients, soil texture you can kind of do once, and that's probably not going to change to a great degree. However, when initially performing a soil test for a new or prospective area, it's a good idea to include this test. And this again just shows again how you would read that with the different percentages to determine your exact classification of the soil. Assuming you don't do any major um, large amendments of any kind, this should stay pretty consistent and something you should know before purchasing a field or growing in a field so that you can make the best uh, adjustments and know what you're walking into before the plants even go in the ground.